Hello, everybody. This is the Sacred Inclusion Network, and we're having another of our Tuesday conversations with Angelo John Lewis, who is the co-founder of the Sacred Inclusion Network and a coach, and our guest, David Wetton, who is, um, helps conscious leaders grow themselves and develop purpose-led, high-performing leadership teams. So he is a leadership coach and he creates leadership programs for people. Welcome, David. We are very happy to have you here and excited to talk about um, the subject that you will be having a wonderful conversation about on Saturday, which is galvanizing change in this pandemic moment. So take it away, Angelo and David. Yeah, you know, um, David, um, I, I thought it might just be useful simply to um, talk about how we started talking about this, you know. Uh, I remember maybe months ago, I was asking David, would you do, would you host one of our monthly things? And you said, sure. David, I said, David, what would you want to talk about? And you said, I think it's called um, Managing Interreligious Differences, I believe it was called. Um, and well, you take it from there. How did we get to where we are? <laughs> I think there's a couple of things. Like one, it was, um, I'd always been fascinated. I'm also an interfaith minister as well as um, doing, doing leadership work. And one of the things I came across was someone talking about multi-religious identity, which means that they have a unique identity, but it's formed and developed under the influence of several different religious traditions. So you might be practicing Christian, Buddhism, a couple, might have three. There's, there's terms on that. And myself and Angela got talking and, and kind of saying, actually, do you know what the groups we're part of? We kind of have a, have a multi-group identity, a multi-community identity, and that we're a member of several different communities, which we contribute to, which have formed us as well. And, and from the outside, some of these links between the communities might be a bit strange to people. Why are you a member of that community and this community? And then we got talking about how really these communities and making a great difference in the world and wouldn't it be wonderful to actually connect them together so i think the story i then told was saying ooh, probably going back 10 15 years ago i just had this picture in the world which might be relevant now for this pandemic of actually uh, saint angelo the old-fashioned christmas tree lights here in the uk where if one bulb went out all the lights went down and so i remember my dad putting you know testing all the bulbs and putting them all back in and i said for me when you think of all these different communities it's like when you have enough and they come together, when, they, when the last one comes in, it's like the, the bulb going in the Christmas tree lights and the Christmas tree lights light up. So everyone kind of sees, wow, there's all these communities and they're making a difference and I want to be part of them. I don't think we're quite there yet, but there's something about actually how do people like ourselves, a member of, of perhaps, you know, multiple different communities, how do we actually get together and make a real impact in these communities? And then you, Angelo, started speaking about the, the network of light and we were kind of speaking a similar language. I think that's how it, that's how it yeah. shifted, I think, into, into this. Yeah, it's, and it's interesting, you know, um, <clears throat> I'm old enough to remember, dur like during the millennium and during before that, um, but there'd be this momentary imp impetus, let's get together and let's do something great, to put it kind of crudely. And then the, something great happens and then it sort of dissipates. You know, um, I can, without thinking about it, I could think of three different things like that. I could think of the mm -hmm. planetary initiative for the world we choose. There was another thing that I remember that was around the millennium. On a, on a, in, the, in the United States, there was Hands Across America, which is maybe not a great analogy. Um, so it is true. There, there, is, there is a way to, um, it's, it's, it's wonderful to get together. You know, and at the same time, um, there's kind of the, the, the values that bring us together. So, um, I mean, we could talk about that, but um, let's just say part of the values is that we all realize that we're part of the sacred community together. Mm -hmm. And all of us are coming from different places. Maybe we're environmentalists. Maybe we're um, spiritual atheists. <laughs> Maybe we're into the, in the Enneagram as David is. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, the interesting thing about that particular dynamic is that there's kind of a built-in place of possible conflict in that within us mm -hmm. and without us. So I've got me multiple memberships that I represent. And sometimes the, the, the specific groups that I'm involved, involved are organ 
they may, to some extent, conflict is a little strong word, but they may be in some kind of, um, you know, like environmentalism is more important than social justice or something like that, you know? So, um, so my vision, I guess, of the network of light is that it's the realization that we're all connected, you know, and um, there is, when we kind of elevate to this, this higher level, and maybe it's um, precipitated by a crisis or what's, what, we're, what, we're, what, we're under, what we're involved in now with the pandemic, um, it gives us a kind of a heightened sense to, um, to move to the, these higher level values and see um, how, you know, how we're united and what we can do with that unity. And it's very much a work in progress. I don't think we really know. But anyway, that's kind of where I'm coming from with this, David. It is, yes. And we kind of thought, you know, when we gather together, it's a space for people who resonate with this really to have some real quality, I think, reflective time. Because I think when we spoke, we realized, well, how, how often do we take time just to reflect on these groups, these communities that we're members of? And, and are we actually making a difference in the world? Because I think another thing that unites us is, is really making a difference for the world for the greater good of all. And I just realized actually so, and I'm not shared this with you, Angelo, but back in 2006, when I was a little bit younger and a little bit more, uh, what do they say, wet under the collar or whatever, but actually, <laughs> I actually held a gathering where it was called Transforming the World. Right, right, right. You right, don't right. kind of get much bigger than that, but I think people in this have this passion for knowing more so, I think really that there's a, a better world waiting to emerge. And, and I think we shared earlier today, or I was delighted to be part of, um, of a webinar where here in the UK, uh, Amy Bradley, who's with Halt Ashridge Business School, she was talking once about compassionate leadership, which is fabulous and saying how important it is in after this pandemic that actually we move towards compassionate leadership. So that took me back. And she also was speaking about the, her belief that a collective shift is happening. So it just seems to be this is the right time. So it's really just a passion to bring people together for this call where actually they can make the, the, the best and the most of what is on their heart, what they really want to achieve. Because my sense is that, and I like thinking of a purpose that runs through, we have a, perhaps a thread of a purpose that goes through our lives with perhaps a number of different callings around this. And with these callings might be a call to serve various communities, be on wards or whatever, and, or be a membership of this, these communities. So this is an opportunity to kind of say, okay, what is my purpose at this time? And how am I serving it through membership of these various mm -hmm. communities? And, and coming together with this collective sense, as you said, Angelo, of values and this sense of it's time, you know, for the greater good to emerge. There's, there is a better way of doing things, a more conscious way of, of being in the world. And uh, I mentioned this to you um, briefly. One of the people I invited uh, was this guy named Richard Bartlett, who is, um, I believe, based in New Zealand. And um, him and I, we just exchanged emails. And he said, you know, I'd be delighted to come. I was, I was so honored. But in any event, um, in his thing, when he was announcing what, and I, I promised to send you the links about microsolidarity, and I will, David. Um, he shared a, a piece on Medium, which influenced a number of people. But in there, he attempted in the beginning to summarize why it's important this moment now. And I just want to read this paragraph. While the biological substrate for life is disintegrating, so is our social fabric. Democratic, democratic populations are electing dictators and buffoons. Fascism is resurgent. Our ability to make meaning is dissolving. Across the political spectrum, people respond to this existential dread by retreating into anxious certainties. Uh, I love the way he formulated that. And, um, you know, I mean, I don't know the statistics about the, you know, the substrate and the, uh, you know, the global warming, but most people on this that listen to this are aware of some of these kind of dynamics. The income and inequality is something which, frankly, I sometimes ignore, but it's so big, it's so huge. You know, there are those of us that are privileged in this pandemic, we've got houses over our, our, our heads, you know, we have enough to eat. There are people that, that are just living from day to day, living on the street, you know, and they're part of our community, they're part of our human community, you know. So I think there's something imperative about, uh, I guess I'll call it taking action to support the earth. You know, maybe that's a little bit highfalutin to say, but that's how I think. You have something that you wanted to add, Wendy. I, I do quite uh, quite a bit on this topic um, about um, sustainable change. 
with people. Um, I agree with everything that's been said that this great pause has been an opportunity for people to get quiet and to step away from the busyness of the, um, you know, Western style of living. And in that getting quiet, people have naturally started turning to observe what they've been doing in the blindness of their busyness. And a lot of people are waking up to that. And that's why there's so much opportunity to um, make the world a better place because people have paused long enough to start thinking and questioning the way that they've been living. But what I found personally in my own life journey to contribute to good is an, an evolution that I think most people in Western nations go through. You start with, I want to make the world a better place, but I have no idea how. And then there's usually a stop somewhere or many times around, what can I do? I'm just one person. I'm certainly not part of the elite in charge or running a company or a government or whatever. And then hopefully if a person is still really earnest, they come to understand that yes, individuals one individual can make a huge difference and maybe I should muster the courage to do so. And then you go to the step of trying to figure out which organization I can work with to contribute, even if it's just making masks out of leftover t-shirts mm -hmm. or whatever. <clears throat> and then if you take it even further, you understand that, um, if a, if a person attaches to a, a nonprofit organization or some kind of movement, it can come and go and dissipate, as you were talking about earlier. But what I found for myself, having made all of these stops in my own life journey, is that until I found personal, deep meaning, way bigger than my life, mm -hmm. and attached and committed myself to a purpose that I knew would not come to fruition in my lifetime. Mm. But I was so aligned with it that I decided I'm on the transition team, even though the outcome will happen maybe generations in the future from me. I'm committed to be on the transition team. And I think because humans are so story oriented in their lives, all of entertainment is, is stories, <laughs> you know, movies, TV, games. It's all about stories. We're always in other people's business. We love stories. If we can associate ourselves with a story that pulls at our heartstrings, that taps into our personal deep meaning, then we can have sustained activity, especially when we're coached, to be focused on process instead of end results, which again is counterculture to our old culture uh, pre-pandemic. You know, West, people in Western nations, especially the United States, love being focused on goals. I'm gonna be a millionaire. I'm gonna get this car. I'm gonna get this position. I'm gonna graduate from this, that, or the other. And that is not a recipe for happiness as we've seen in our culture. Recipe for happiness is really enjoying the process of whatever you're pursuing. Then your life is happy. Then you can be happy regardless of the outcomes and the twists and turns. And so for me, it's a, a mental shift that has to take place in order for people to participate in a sustained way and Secondly, or maybe the first, is it has to be in alignment with personal meaning. And it has to be something that resonates so deeply inside of you that you are willing to consistently take action throughout your lifetime, regardless of outcome. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a lot to say about that, but I just want to add one piece. Like, but for me personally, I understand what you're saying about um, kind of aligning to a sort of a higher value 
in my language, it's like, I think that I'm a, I, I, for me, what's my archetype? You know, uh, how can that archetype live through the personality body of Angelo type thing? That's kind of how I, I think about that, you know? Um, and the, the thing that I'm, I'm hoping that we'll explore, um, you know, on Saturday is, is sort of like the, the interrelationship between souls. So let's say we all get to that place that we're aligning to our higher values or we're expressing our true self and we, we're clear about that. So what is it, what is this dance that's involved with, with, with inter, 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 interconnecting, interrelating um, purposely and gently and playfully with other souls that are at a similar level, I'll call it, are, are, are also part of this um, sacred inclusion network. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the sacred sacred community that we're all a part of it, not the sacred inclusion network um, with with the, with the capital letters, the small one that we're all part of, sacred community. Mm, I think that, I think that's beautiful, and and I, and I think there is there's almost I think a knowing or recognition I think when when you meet others I think irrespective of what and I love what you said about you know purpose and staying in there when they just thought that was fabulous. Uh, and, I, and I think when you meet others like that, there's just a resonance, whatever their faith may be, whatever their chosen area of work may be, whatever their own purpose may be. I, it, 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 I, use, I love that word, is it ineffable? You can't really quite touch it, but you know that it's there and you sense it and you connect with it. And, and there's something then about special about, you know, you mentioned when, you know, the States and the, I'm going to call it the older paradigm around competition. This to me seems it's, it's more like collaboration yeah because actually you really know deep down that actually by connecting by helping by supporting by connecting to your part it's back to christmas tree lights you all kind of plug in together you all know kind of you, you kind of knowing perhaps where where this tree is not at the top and bottom tree it's just a tree you connect into and i think when you're plugged into that you know i think you tap into that what i felt through you wendy is this real sense of joy you know, that I had as a young lad when my dad put all the lights together and they weren't working, they're on, and the Christmas tree lights come on. There's an innate sense of joy around that, and I think that's what it is. And if you can tap into that and have that through your life, wow, isn't that something quite incredible? And so, if you can take that, I think, and kind of put it into this space and say, How am I kind of playing? Because it could be joyful. How am I playing across communities? I think that's a really powerful conversation to have and have and I just remember actually, I think it was the, the Zen, well he's still alive, the Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh, in his language of Buddhism kind of said actually the next Buddha will be a, will be a Sangha, will be a community, oh, wow. you know, as That's opposed good. to an individual. So, and yeah. I really love that because I, and I think I sense, I can feel it, you know, that he's not talking about, you know, oh, what's going to be the sacred inclusion network that will save the world, but actually once, once these communities come together, because each one is holding such a fantastic energy for this emergence it's like again somewhere when you bring them together when people are across several networks communities what we're talking about here i'm going to use a strange word magic starts to happen you know and things start to emerge it's true it's so true uh, it's the age of aquarius right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> quite literally uh, it, so uh, it just tying everything together Good luck with that. Um, no, no, it's, it's all tied together in my head. I, uh, just listening to you and this conversation has been so beautiful. Um, I'm very committed to that style of leadership that you've been describing, David, and that's part of my mission in the world is mm -hmm. to support people on stepping into that kind of leadership. And that requires um, that the individual becomes a strong individual. Mm -hmm. meaning they have the strength to live by their own standards and values. Mm -hmm. And when you have the strength to live oriented to your mission, your standard, your personal standards and personal values, then you're not living by roles. I'm a mother, I'm a CEO, I'm a mm -hmm. husband, whatever mm -hmm. your roles are. When you step out of living from roles, which you don't have to think about, <laughs> fall into a society and you've taken the time to use the great pause to think about what who you are as an individual and what is most important to you then if you develop that inner strength you can become a member of multiple groups 
and multiple networks in alignment with your most powerful and sacred and, and important values. Mm -hmm. And that way you're contributing in a really full way. And again, if you're focused on process instead of outcome, it's easier to step into that, you know, Tao of Pooh, um, Forrest Gump style, <laughs> falling into the magical right thing at the magical right time, mm -hmm. simply because you are following your um, delight and curiosity as you're moving through life because your core is this, you know, big value and your big mission and it's not so self-focused and you allow yourself to participate in multiple places with multiple people and by nature of that combination, magic will happen. Mm, wonderful. How? Yeah, and I, I just for, feel compelled because David just <laughs> brings out all the stuff in me, as you do, Wendy. You know, you were talking about the, you know, the difference between competition when, you know, people are, it's like, you know, when we encounter, when we're both on the path and we're secure, to use Wendy's language, in ourself, mm -hmm. it doesn't become like I'm looking for something from you or I want anything from you. It's like, I'm open, man. I can just learn from talking to David. David, I become different. I become transformed. I'm not focused on this, this kind of like shell of, of personality type of thing, you know? Um, mm -hmm. We're just playing, we're dancing, we're learning from one another, and we're just hopefully enriching one another. And wow, you know? Anyway, I hope <laughs> that those of you that are listening to us are get a taste of what we're going to explore on Saturday at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 3 p.m. in Britain. David? Um, well, time is East, time 11 o'clock with five hours, so it's 4 p.m. So you, it's 4 p.m. Um, mm. and it's 4 p.m. In, in UK time and it's 8 a.m. Pacific time. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not intelligent enough to do Asia. But uh, anyway, I, I hope that you'll join us and you'll, you know, let other people know about it because we're so excited. Yes, and I just wanted to add one final thing and actually Please. build in what Wendy was saying because something came to me saying which I absolutely love because I think it's resonant. You know, once you've got that understanding of that purpose and you're standing solid, you can then actually make a choice, and I love this saying, to stand in the place of possibility and let the outcome be the outcome. Wow. So it's really invite to those that are watching this to say, well, come along this Saturday and stand in the place of possibility with us because... You know, you witness the conversation between the three of us here and things happen and things spark. So come and join the fire. <laughs> You're welcome. It's an inclusion <laughs> network. It is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, and we'll put the, um, the link. Do we, we have a sign up for the Saturday no. events, though. No, we don't. No, we don't. They can either jump in. Hopefully, they'll let us know by sending email to info at divespirit.com if they're coming. So David and I can figure out whether we're going to do subgroups or whether we're going to not. So anyway, um, we haven't got that together yet, Wendy, but we will get, get there. Oh, well, I'll put a link. I'll create something and put it in a comment to this live. If you're watching on the replay, give us a hashtag replay and let us know what your thoughts are on how you can participate in changing the world. Um, what has this conversation stimulated uh, inside of you listening to this conversation? And let us know if you're going to participate on Saturday. We'd love to hear from you. Just say, yes, I'll be there. Right. Um, so, yeah, let us know in the comments. Peace out.